Hey everyone, welcome to Shop Talks. We're here at the Impressions Virtual Show and this is the Ink Kitchen Shop Talks hosted by Hirsch and our good friends at Haynes. You want a comfortable shirt? Get a Haynes one. All right, a good friend of Ink Kitchen is uh, is our buddy, Eric Solo Man. Hello, how's it going? Are you really into solos? Uh, yes, all of them. So what is your print shop called? Uh, I run a company with my wife uh, in Houston called Night Owls. That is good. Now, is that because you guys only work at night? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. We only work at night um, and, uh, and usually in the dark. So it, it fits us perfectly. Wow. Yeah. Who would have known? <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. So we're going to talk to Eric a little bit about fulfillment and how fulfillment has been a, a benefit on their business. Um, Eric, how did you get into order fulfillment? Uh, so we work a lot with musicians and artists and we had done fulfillment before we had started doing night owls with another screen printing shop and it worked pretty well, but, um, we shied away from it because we're not accountants and we felt we were not very good at, uh, collecting funds and paying people out. So we stopped doing it for a while. Um, and then once we started night owls, a couple of years went by. And I'd say probably four years into the business, we started looking into it again, just because we had some clients that were on tour all the time and uh, needed someone to sell merchandise for them um, when they were out on the road. So we agreed uh, to help some friends at a very small capacity. And we just started to see that it was a, it was really like a boost to our sales and boost to um, our, our production because uh, we always had stuff to do. So what do you think the difference between fulfillment and enlightenment is? I think that like when you're enlightened, it's like, uh, you know, you're kind of like a know-it-all. When you are fulfilled, you've just eaten a lot. I think, I think that's kind of the, the big difference. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, at least that's how I understand it. So fulfillment, what, what all types of items are you fulfilling for your customers? We do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, our main items are going to be apparel, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, caps, things like that. Um, we also do a lot of vinyl records, a lot of enamel pins. Um, lately, we've been doing a lot of posters. Um, and then we even have some like weird items like seat cushions and Nutella spreads and candles. Uh, and, and that's been, it's been an area for our business that uh, we have found to be like, it's, it's been growing so fast that we're having to learn how to work with customers when they have these weird requests. Uh, because like, we don't want to say no, but at the same time, like we also don't want to be handling goods that are like thousands of dollars to create and like one little mess up can, can screw it up. So it, it's been a really tricky line to, to sort of walk on. So are you sourcing all of those items or do your customers bring some items to you that you guys do not produce? It's a mixture. I mean, we don't, uh, we don't make um, vinyl records. We're not in the business of vinyl, vinyl records. So like items like that, they're making it at a vinyl record pressing plant and sending it to us. Um, other items that we've done like candles or these or Nutella spread or even like hot sauce, same thing, like we're not sourcing those items. They're working uh, typically in collaboration with someone that actually does make and manufacture that stuff. But if there is something we can do to help uh, source or manufacture something, whether it be like a throw blanket or um, a challenge coin or something, like we're, we're all about doing that and often do it for our clients. If I'm a screen printing shop and I'm not currently doing fulfillment, but I think maybe it would be a good thing to add to my business, what are some considerations that I should make to add fulfillment to my business? I think the biggest one is, are you organized enough to really like keep track of everything? And then second, and it follows very, very close to that is, do you have space to accurately and correctly store items? Um, I think that with fulfillment, one of the big, uh, pitfalls is that you really do need space, especially if you scale and keep growing. Because like if you keep bringing on stores or if you have a store that's really popular, 
like you have to have enough space to allocate to their goods. Otherwise you're losing packages, uh, you're, you're losing items, you're tripping all over yourself. And, and that's stuff that we deal with constantly. It's like allocating space correctly. I think space is a, is a really important one, which is why our government has a space force. Yes, uh, they're going to protect us all. Yes, uh, so that's great. I think that uh, fulfillment, uh, the, the space thing is really important. How do you know when you are doing fulfillment, at what point did you decide to dedicate an employee to fulfillment? And how many orders do you think you have to ship in order to kind of break even with that? Um, we, we learned pretty early on that we wanted someone like full-time overseeing it, at least for a, a bare minimum client interaction. Um, now we have like uh, five years in, I think we have a team of six or seven people um, that work in fulfillment and really like they all have sort of specialized tasks, but at the end of the day, like everyone in fulfillment's like baseline job is to pick and pack orders. Um, I don't know uh, break even for our fulfillment because I'm, I'm not good at stuff like that. Uh, so even, I, I don't know that stuff off the top of my head, um, but I do know that like on an average basis, like on a normal day, we're shipping anywhere from let's say 300 packages. And then like on an insanely like heavy Black Friday weekend, it might be something like 1500 packages a day. Okay, cool. And, and organization obviously has a whole lot to do with that workflow of being able to ship a whole lot of packages. Um, especially when you're shipping glassware. Do you think glassware is probably the fastest thing that you ship? You ship the most of that is, is faster than t-shirts? Um, yeah, I mean, it's really helpful like when the postal carriers can like crumple it up for you and make it so like you have a glass into like pieces. It, it makes it to transport it like really, really helpful for everybody. So that that's a good point. Yeah, so really, you know, maybe you would have shipped one product, but by the time it gets to the customer, it's kind of like hundreds of products. Yeah, and we really try and like use that to like, you know, we, we try and let them know that, hey, like we're doing this in your best interest. You know, like I know you wanted this one particular thing, but like, how about you have a hundred or a thousand pieces of this particular thing? And uh, and a lot of people, they, they, really, um, they really act like they're not happy about it. You know, it's, uh, but, but I know, I know they're joking. <laughs> it's like getting one of those puzzles that's all the same color. Yeah. Yeah. And you just put it together, a little yep. bit of glue. Yep, maybe exactly. that's a, maybe you should put some uh, super glue in with the package. That, that's a good idea. And, and especially during like COVID times when everyone's like at home, uh, mm -hmm. they need something to do. Like it's, a, it's not only a product that they want supporting uh, their favorite artists or brand, but now it's like a, you know, a DIY put it together kit uh, for them to like spend an afternoon on. Yeah. Wow. This is genius. And I, I believe deserves an upsell. So uh, over the past year, I kind of hate talking about COVID because it's so uh, in your face been, everywhere. Yeah. I feel like it's been done. People have already yeah. talked about this, but yeah. over the past year, how do you think fulfillment has helped your business? I, I can say that without fulfillment, um, we would, I don't know if we wouldn't be in business any longer, but um, it definitely was like our, our saving grace during the past year. Um, I, I talked about it earlier. When, when you have fulfillment and you have customers that are, that are selling uh, well, then you are just introducing sales into your production department. Uh, because like, we just have to continually keep putting things out. And when most folks were at home last year during the pandemic, and especially like when they were getting stimulus money, our web stores were seeing increases in sales to the size of like what we would normally see on like a Black Friday weekend, which in most cases for retail is sort of like the Holy Grail weekend. That's like where you make, you know, millions of dollars. So like, we were seeing that during our traditionally slower or dead times, just because people were bored, uh, people had this extra money coming in, and uh, and it was it was crazy. But all of that resulted in things were selling out. We had to keep replenishing stock, and that even went for customers that we weren't doing fulfillment with, but we do like the production for. We were constantly having to replenish their orders because 
they would print, let's say, 100 t-shirts. Those would sell out in, let's say, three days or a week, when normally that would take them two to three months to sell. So we were seeing uh, a large influx of reorders throughout the entire year, uh, just to kind of keep up with demand for our fulfillment clients or our clients that had e-commerce or web stores. I have heard that most, most businesses that do order fulfillment uh, did fairly well through the pandemic. And uh, of course the pandemic is still haunting us at this moment. Hopefully it won't haunt us soon. But uh, I do think that having fulfillment as a part of your business is, is a great idea. I think it's difficult to do it well, uh, just like anything else. Um, I know a lot of uh, print shops did the Here for Good campaign, which I believe was started by a tiny little monster print shop. And, uh, and many other businesses did their own types of fundraising stores. Uh, there's several platforms that will allow you to do fundraising stores. So maybe a good thing to look at for your business at home and uh, think about ways that you can add fulfillment to your business. Eric, thank you so much for being a friend of the Ink Kitchen. Thanks for being my friend. <clears throat> You're welcome. Are you on the Instagram? Is there a Night Owls uh, site on the Instagram? Uh, yeah, it's Night Owls Print. And if you go there, you can see us uh, talk about water-based ink a lot. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that method of screen printing, but um, we're pretty big fans. And so we tend to talk about it a lot. Uh, we also talk about our employees a lot too. So you, uh, you can kind of see behind the scenes and, and get to know us a little bit more. So if you wanna learn about water-based ink, or steal one of Eric's employees. Follow them on Instagram. It'll yes. do you. It'll, it'll do you wonders. Yes, it sure will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this shop talk with Eric from Night Owls on fulfillment. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>